Finally, the successor to one of my favorite action cameras is here, the Insta360 GO 3. With its small form factor, the many mounting options and the good image quality, the Insta360 GO is actually without competition in its segment. But today we want to understand how good the new GO 3 has really gotten. And the best way to do that is with a comparison, specifically with its predecessor the GO 2 and the GoPro Hero 11. To make it more exciting and fun, there are 15 categories, 2 points for the winner of a category and 1 point for the second place. And stay until the end and take a look at all the categories, because there are some interesting surprises. The first category is right away a great strength of the Go 3, portability. The Insta360 Go 3 is almost identically the same size as the Go 2. It weighs a few grams more, but the difference is barely noticeable. At 35 grams, the weight is less than a quarter than that of the Hero 11 at 154 grams. The difference in size is also huge of course. The Go 3 and Go 2 also have a case, or action pod as it's called with the Go 3. In both cases, this base acts as a charging station, remote control and for storing the camera at the same time. Like the Go 2, the Go 3 is fully functional when it is in the action pod. So you can operate it normally and of course shoot while the Go 3 is in the action pod and charging. The Go 3 even looks almost like a slightly smaller GoPro when it is in the action pod. The case of the Go 2 was closable and strongly reminded of the case of the Apple AirPods. The Go 3's action pod on the other hand is no longer a proper case but rather a multifunctional charging station with a proper display. All that doesn't change much in terms of portability of the camera itself though. That's why the Go 3 and Go 2 share the first place in this category. The GoPro lands in third place and we should take a closer look at the Go 3's display because it's one of the Go 3's big innovations. It is now possible to display a preview without connecting the Go to a smartphone. In addition, the display can be tilted, it can be flipped up completely, so you can control the framing while filming yourself. That's awesome and unique in this form for an action camera. And of course, the display vastly improves the usability of the Go 3 compared to the Go 2. Because no matter how good a smartphone app is, the connection with its own display is much faster and easier than with a smartphone app. When you take the Go 3 out of the action pod, there are no interruptions in the preview image. The preview image continues to be displayed as if the Go 3 and the action pod were one unit. This is also because the action pod and the Go 3 automatically connect immediately when you turn the action pod on. The Go 3's display is about the same size as the Hero 11's back display. I would also say that it is a bit brighter and more responsive than the GoPro's display. The display has always been a weakness of the GoPro. The Go 3 doesn't need a front display because the display folds all the way up. Especially when you attach the camera to your chest or helmet, a separate display is an advantage if only to set the framing correctly. The Hero 11 also has a front display, but it is much smaller and not equivalent. Two points for the Go 3, one for the GoPro. A built-in display has a decisive disadvantage, especially with an action camera. It makes the camera more vulnerable. A break of the display can lead to a total loss of the camera. Last year I dropped the Go 2 on the hard ground while climbing from a height of more than 10 meters. It was in the pivot stand and did not sustain a scratch. I can assure you that it would have turned out differently with the GoPro. A simple drop can result in a total loss with the GoPro. So when it comes to durability, the win clearly goes to Insta360. However, I think that the Go 2 is best protected because the case of the Go 2 can be closed. It can therefore be stored safely the best and easiest. Two points for the Go 2, one for the Go 3. It's a different story if you want to use the camera underwater. The Hero 11 is waterproof up to 10 meters. The Go 3 has been improved in this regard compared to the Go 2 and is now waterproof up to 5 meters. Unlike the case of the Go 2, the action pod is splash proof. For snorkeling, the Go 3 is fine. For diving, you should use the Hero 11. Two points for the Hero 11, one for the Go 3. One of the big surprises of the Go 3 is the new mount. That's because Insta360 didn't simply adopt the Go 2's magnetic mount. Rather, they added a quick release mounting system. And this new mount in combination with the magnet is one of the big highlights of the Go 3. You can attach the Go 3 to a quick release mount and it won't fall off even if you shake it violently. By simply pressing on the sides, you can take it off and quickly attach it elsewhere. The system is very similar to DJI's Action 3. By the way, you can also attach the action pod using the quick release mount. And then of course, there is the magnetic mounting system, which allows you to attach the Go 3 to metal surfaces without any additional mount. That can be incredibly useful. There are also a variety of mounts from Insta360, such as this necklace that you can wear under your t-shirt and attach the Go 3 to conveniently and quickly. Or the easy clip to attach it to a cap for example, the pivot stand for smooth surfaces, 
and with a fully rotating hinge. And of course, there is an adapter for GoPro mounts. The possibilities to mount this camera are endless. Pivot stand, easy clip and the magnet pendant are included in the standard packaging by the way. Clearly two points for the Go 3, one for the Go 2. Yes, of course, in terms of form factor and flexible concept, the Go 3 has a clear advantage. But how well can this little camera compete with the Hero 11 when it comes to image quality? What's your first impression when you look at these shots? I think the overall first impression is important. Because one thing is what you see when you enlarge a freeze frame and zoom in, and another thing is what your overall impression is. But of course we are going to take a look at the image quality in detail now. And let's start with the GoPro's biggest advantage, resolution. The Hero 11 has a maximum resolution of 5.3K, the Go 2 and Go 3 can't keep up with that. Overall the image from the two Go's looks good, but it's not as detailed as the GoPro's. The Go 3's maximum resolution is 2.7K compared to 1440 on the Go 2. The difference in terms of detail isn't that great though. Slow motion footage can be captured by the Go 2 and Go 3 at 120 frames per second in 1080. For 1080 the shots look good. But this category goes to the GoPro by 2 points. The Go 3 and Go 2 end up in second place together. While the Go 3 didn't make a huge jump in resolution, the colors were significantly improved in my opinion. All three cameras have three color profiles. A natural color profile on the Go 2 and Go 3 it's called standard, a slightly more saturated color profile called vivid, on the GoPro vibrant and a flat color profile. You can see that the colors on the Go 3 now look much more realistic compared to the Go 2. The Go 3 usually exposes a little brighter when faces are in the frame because the exposure adjusts to the face. This can be changed if necessary. When comparing the Go 3 to the GoPro, I'll just let the shots speak for themselves. The Hero 11 creates an extremely high contrast and aggressive look. You may or may not like that. Colors are to a large extent simply a matter of taste. Which shots do you like better in a direct comparison? I give the GoPro and the Go 3 2 points each. The Go 2 comes in third place. The Go 3 not only improved in terms of colors, but also in terms of dynamic range. That is, in situations when there are very bright and very dark areas in the same image. The difference to the Go 2 can be seen especially in transitions between dark and bright. The recording of the Go 3 adapts much more dynamically to the new situation. The GoPro is still a bit faster here. In addition, the GoPro's recording has a bit more detail in the dark areas than the Go 3. 2 points to the Hero 11, 1 to the Go 3. Just like the Go 2, the Go 3 has a very special sensor, a square one, and the field of view is extremely wide, wider than that of the GoPro. On top of that, in free frame video mode, you are still completely free to adjust the field of view and aspect ratio after shooting, simply because you have a square image at your disposal. You can therefore convert a 16 to 9 shot into a 9 to 16 shot without cropping. Incredibly useful for social media. You can even dynamically change the framing in post using keyframes and add a vortex effect for example. On the Hero 11, you can also change the field of view in post, but only in one direction, from wide to narrow. The almost square 8 to 7 sensor on the Hero 11 also offers a few interesting options with Super View and Hyper View. For the field of view, 2 points to the Go 3 and Go 2, 1 to the GoPro because the difference isn't that big. These shots make one thing clear. All three cameras are not particularly well suited for low light conditions. I would say that the GoPro's image in this comparison has a bit less noise and is a bit cleaner than the one from the Go 3. The colors look a bit nicer. However, it is also noticeable that the GoPro stabilization works worse in low light. By the way, this shot of the GoPro was taken in 4K and not 5K, as it performs better in 4K in low light. I also can't see too much of a difference between the Go 3 and the Go 2. I also did a test with manual settings and see the GoPro slightly ahead overall. The difference isn't huge though. 2 points for the GoPro, 1 for the Go 3 and the Go 2. GoPro has always been a master of image stabilization, but the competition has caught up and so has Insta360. Footage from the Go 3 and Hero 11 are similarly well stabilized. I'd have to be lying if I said I saw a clear winner here. But that's also true for the Go 2. It stabilizes shots just as well as the other two cameras. That's two points for all three cameras. Many feel that overheating and battery life are one of the Hero 11's biggest weaknesses. And in fact, limited recording time and overheating were certainly one of the Go 2's weaknesses as well. So the important question is, what about the Go 3? And the answer is, much better than I expected it to be. Insta360 has worked on the design of the camera to extend the maximum recording time. Here in the Alps it is already very warm and I tested the Go 3 here in the office at 25 degrees Celsius in the highest resolution 2.7K. 
And yes, of course, these are not realistic conditions. But there were no problems with overheating. In the action pod, the battery lasted for 1 hour and 40 minutes. Without the action pod, the little Go 3 could shoot for 40 minutes. After that, you can just connect it to the action pod and continue recording. For comparison, the Hero 11 shut down in 4K and 2.7K after 40 minutes due to overheating and in 5K after just 34 minutes. This category surprisingly goes to the Go 3 for me. One point for the GoPro. One of the weaknesses of the Go 2 was certainly the somewhat awkward handling. Since it does not have a real display, it is not quite easy to change settings without connecting the camera to the smartphone. The operation via the two buttons on the case was not the best. That has now changed thanks to the action pod and the good display. The Go 3 is at least as easy to use as a GoPro. And of course, you can still use it with the action pod turned off. I would also argue that Insta360's app is better than the GoPro app. In the ease of use category, I give the Go 3 and the GoPro 2 points each. Audio quality has never been a strong point of action cameras. The waterproof housing is probably not ideal for installing microphones. However, Insta360 has installed a second microphone on the Go. And indeed, the Go 3 sounds much better than the Go 2. But does it also sound much better than the Hero 11? I still see the Hero 11 just ahead in terms of audio quality. However, the difference to the Go 3 is small. The GoPro has a bit more bass and sounds a bit fuller. The Go 2 is just too quiet and also has difficulties with wind noise. Two points for the Hero 11, one for the Go 3. Before we get to the final category, I'd like to point out a few features and characteristics that might be important to consider when making a decision to buy. On the Go 3, not only the battery, but also the memory are integrated. This means you have to decide on the memory size when buying, similar to a smartphone. When the storage is full, you can upload the footage to the smartphone on the go, freeing up memory. All three cameras have similar shooting modes, including a time-lapse mode, a hyperlapse mode, and of course a photo mode. The Go 3 now supports voice commands, just like the Hero 11. And a few words about the apps. The GoPro Quick App is free, but if you want to use all the features, you'll need a paid subscription. All of the Insta360 app's features, on the other hand, are free. And the good app is one of Insta360's strengths. All of this has an impact on the price of the camera. And that brings us to the last category. Of course, the price is not a factor that makes a camera worse or better, but it can be important for the purchase decision. The Insta360 Go 3 costs $379, with 32 gigabytes of storage. You should probably go for the 64 gigabytes version, which costs 399, the same as the GoPro Hero 11. You can find a link to all the prices and configurations in the video description. As mentioned, the standard packaging of the Go 3 includes multiple mounts and the memory is already integrated. With a GoPro, you'll definitely need to buy a memory card and should probably make a subscription as well. Still, the price difference overall is not huge. The Go 2 is the cheapest of the three cameras. Therefore, two points for the Go 2 and one for the Go 3 and the GoPro. The Go 3 wins this comparison test. Needless to say, the awarding of points and the categories are subjective. And of course, the Go 3 is not a better choice for absolutely everyone, but it simply offers the better and above all more interesting overall concept. And the Go 3 has been improved in almost every way compared to the Go 2. Insta360 is serious about the Go, so take a closer look at it. You can find a link to the Go 3 in the description. There will be a detailed tutorial about the Go 3 soon, where I will explain all the features in detail. So stay tuned and see you next time.